This is the biggest, baddest, most powerful light duty production truck that money can buy. This is the Ram TRX. And there's a lot to talk about with this vehicle, but there are a couple things that I do know that I can share with you. First of all, it has over 700 horsepower. Second of all, this review is not gonna be cheap on gas. There's 10 bucks. A few years ago when Dodge introduced the Hellcat, you knew it was just a matter of time before they would make a pickup truck version of that. And uh, thank you, my hat's off to everyone at FCA, uh, Stellantis now, Dodge, whatever name it is, thank you so much for making it happen, all the engineers and enthusiasts. So here it is, and I'm gonna start right off the bat with the price because this TRX is not inexpensive and that shouldn't be a surprise. It's gonna run you about $100,000, uh, which is a lot more than your normal run of the mill Ram 1500. However, this is anything but normal. So let's start at the front, uh, right there. Come on, check this out. The three LED clearance lights inside this hood scoop here it just makes it look super menacing. This does have the actual hood graphics package. That is an option I would highly recommend, or I would get it if I was getting this, because it just makes it real, look really tough. Uh, then you got these um, extractors on the hood here. These are supposed to be functional. I can't see them going through though. Maybe it's somewhere else, uh, but this uh, scoop will take in 50% of the air that it needs. The other 50% comes through the grill. Speaking of the grill, you have the large uh, 3D extruded RAM Ram uh, brand right there. You have dynamic LEDs with daytime running lights here. You also have some LED markers and LED fog lamps. I do wish these LED clearance lights would actually uh, come on by default when you start the vehicle. They only come on when the headlights are on or if you put your marker lights on, but I just think they look so cool that they should always be on. And in case you're wondering, wow, this thing looks big. Well, it really is. This is not based on the same frame as the Ram 1500. This is a lot more beefed up in a lot of different places. Things are extended as well. Speaking of extended, uh, this, Ram TRX is eight inches wider than the standard Ram 1500, and you will notice that when you drive it, but it just looks menacing, it looks tough, uh, it looks really wide, especially with these composite uh, fender flares that house. Uh, you have nine inch wide rims, so it's an inch wider than the regular eight inch rims, 18 inch wheels on 35 inch tires. Uh, this thing just looks like a monster, right? And when you see it, especially in person, it just really looks like a street legal Baja or trophy truck. Now onto the back, once again, you got the flares here. I love the, the look from the side here. In the rear, you have LED tail lights as well. This one is equipped with a little sidestep, which is a welcome feature because not only is this TRX wider, it's also quite a bit taller than your regular uh, Ram 1500. So it makes it a lot easier to get in and out of the back here. Uh, you can just give it a little kick there. So this has a trailer hitch with the actual uh, trailing harness. This can tow up to 8,100 pounds. Check out these huge huge exhaust tips here. Uh, they're about, I'd say about five inches. Now these are just the tips. They don't go all the way uh, back, but it looks like about a three inch exhaust all the way until the very end for the five inch tips here. This also has a remote lift gate release. Now this is not power activated. It will not go up by itself, uh, but it does have an assist. So it's fairly easy and it has a nice dampened effect when it comes down. Now there are a few options you can get on the TRX one. This one is equipped with a cargo hold system. So you can see the rails down the side for uh, battening down the hatches to cinch things down. But the most obvious one is this one is equipped with a rear uh, bed mounted spare tire 
full-size spare, I must add, uh, it really makes it look, once again, the part of a, a Trophy or Baja truck. And not only do you have one there, there still is one under this vehicle. So you have two uh, full-size spares. And um, yeah, I don't, don't, don't know if I would get it. It looks cool. And, and it would actually provide some nice, uh, some extra ballast for the rear for traction. Or if you're going to launch this in the air, I'm sure that front end has a lot of weight to it. So a little bit coming back it wouldn't be a bad thing. However, it does take quite a bit of room up uh, for your valuable cargo space. Let's have a look inside. Just because you're in a rock throwing, fire breathing, 700 plus horsepower pickup doesn't mean that you can't have the luxury and creature comforts that you would uh, have in a regular vehicle. And there really is not much compromise in the interior of this cabin. Uh, first, this does have the optional red accent package. You can see the red accents everywhere on the seats. These are leather seats, by the way. Of course, they have the embroidered TRX in them. They're heated, they're ventilated. You have a nice new flat bottom steering wheel. You have suede on the top and bottom and leather on the sides that feels very, very racy. Uh, one thing that's actually very handy, these grab handles. Every door gets one and this vehicle is pretty tall, so it's handy to have and they're pretty rugged. It'd be nice for the passengers. If you're going over some real rough terrain, you might want to grab hold to that. Uh, in the middle, you have your standard 12-inch Uconnect screen. Big fan of this system, so easy to use. Uh, you can configure it how you want. You can split the screen down. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come with it. This does have a backup camera as well as a top-down camera. Uh, what I like is you can program or drag in into the bottom dock what items you use the most. So uh, let's say I want the surround cam. Well, I've put that down the bottom. If I want my heated steering wheel, so I don't have to go through the climate menu or the control menu. It's right there as well. This also has a brand new head up display. So that is straight in front of you. Lots of new information on there. And it's very, very clear. Uh, as you can see, this has a very long, large panoramic roof. Nice to let the sun in or let the light in, especially for the rear seat passengers. We'll look back there in a second. Lots of usability in this cabin. Of course, there's lots of storage. Uh, above the screen, you have an area here. You could probably put your pens or a small phone up there. There's a 12 volt outlet so you can hook your, your GPS devices or uh, anything or dash cam right there. You don't have to actually fish it all the way down and lots of storage. You have uh, two levels of storage in the door pockets. You have your regular glove compartment above that. There's another compartment that opens up uh, in the middle here. First of all, you'll notice there's a TRX uh, VIN plaque right here. So there's your VIN number. It shows you uh, it's designed by FCA in Auburn Hills Michigan and it is a 6.2 liter Hemi with 702 horsepower. It's a dual action type of um, armrest so the first lever will open up. You have a USB here, a type A. By the way there are four USBs up front, two type A, two type C and when we open this up furthermore there is a larger compartment here and I think a, a coin holder and in here you have a 120 volt plug here. So there's a 400 watt inverter, but a nice deep uh, area here to put lots of different valuables or whatever you want to store away. By the way, if you ever do get bored of listening to the beautiful sound and squeal of that supercharger under that hood, this one is equipped. It's a $2,000 option with a 19 speaker Harman Kardon system. And regardless of what kind of system it is, it honestly sounds fabulous. It really, really, really does. Uh, I didn't know how much it cost or anything. I just came in here. I turned it on. I'm like, wow, um, it does sound really, really good. So if you're an audiophile or you just really enjoy nice, clean sound in your music, you know what? Buck up for that option. I would. In the rear, there is a lot of room back here, just like the standard Ram 1500. It is best in class. So much room, so much legroom. This seat in front is adjusted to uh, where I would sit. I'm almost five foot 11. Uh, it's, it's like business class seating. You have a complete 
flat floor. If you pull up the floor mat, there is storage under the floor and these seats even slide back and forth. There are three seat belts back here. And if you need more room to haul things, these seat uh, bottoms fold up. Uh, you can put uh, things like um, electronics like I have here. Look at, I found a GoPro and uh, tripods or long items. They all fit in there. This rear also has a 400 watt inverter. You have two USB type A's and two type C's. So they, you're protected either way. You might not have the type C, so you don't need an adapter, which is nice. There is no rear climate control here. You do have your own vents though. Uh, and these seats in the rear are not only heated, but they're ventilated as well. So let's go for a drive. Nothing left to do then start this beast up. Oh yeah. You don't even have to go fast, just listening to the sound of this engine. So let's not dwell too much on it because most of you all know uh, this is a 6.2 liter supercharged uh, Hemi engine. It puts out 702 horsepower and 650 pound feet of torque. Yes, this is a beast, but you do need quite a bit of power to move something this large. But you know what? There are just certain things in life that just don't make sense. And this might be just one of them, you know? So uh, does anyone need 700 horsepower for the street? Probably not. Uh, this vehicle is so big and so tall that uh, you can't really fit it into any underground parking spot. So if you live in an apartment or want to visit someone or go shopping downtown, uh, you forget about parking in an underground parking lot and even regular parking spots uh, on the smaller side of those ones, this will not fit. You'll overhang or uh, it's so wide that you're just going edge to edge of the lines. But with that all being said, it's still pretty cool to drive something this big and powerful um, on the street, hands down. <laughs> oh yeah, and let's just skip right to the point of fuel economy. Okay, you wanna talk impractical? This big bad boy averages in my real world driving right now, uh, we have driven 110 kilometers, that's all we've driven right now, and we are averaging 33.1 liters per 100K. I reset this when I uh, just started it and picked it up. Uh, yeah, 33.1 liters per 100K, that is, that takes a record for the most, uh, the, the most inefficient, most <laughs> inefficient vehicle that I have ever driven um, in my life. Hands down, like even large RVs get better fuel economy than this. Miles per gallon, you're probably talking about between six and seven miles per gallon in this. And I've been driving it fairly easy as well. However, I've been doing a lot of short trips. So that will actually kill your mileage instead of heading it, uh, putting it onto a highway. But when you hear that whine of that uh, supercharger, it just kind of makes it all worth it. Uh, yes, it's expensive, but hey, guess what? What do they say? You have to pay to play and you definitely will pay for this one here. Another thing that might attribute to the abysmal fuel economy of this vehicle uh, is that it is a full-time four-wheel drive system. So there is no two-wheel drive option. You can't just flick it. So right uh, by your right hand here, you do have a TRX mode selector and below that you have your um, your drive selection for your four wheel drive auto, four high, you can do axle lock and four low. For the TRX mode, you can actually choose from uh, different drive programs. Uh, one nice thing is you can have custom so you can adjust how you want for your steering, your transmission, your suspension, which we'll talk about in one second. Um, and you have sport mode, you have mud and sand, you have Baja, of course, and uh, rock crawling. So you have rock mode. And in order to use that, you have to actually go into four low for that. Um, so all different types of programs, or you can put into custom as we mentioned. So let's just put it back to a, uh, a more normal program here. And if you hit the TRX, button itself it brings up uh, all your parameters on that 12 inch Uconnect screen and uh, it's very much just like the performance pages that you would get in an SRT product.
The weather here is just nuts. Uh, it was just sunny not too long ago, and now we've went through the hailstorm. It's just dark. It's like nighttime right now. Uh, so beside that, you have a launch button. Super easy to use. It's basically launch for dummies. You hit that button. It makes sure that you're on a level ground, that your steering wheel straight. And if that's all done, you just um, you apply the brake. You push it down until you get enough brake pressure. It'll actually show you in the middle display and it tells you to go full throttle. And when you're ready to go, you just let go of that brake and off you go. Zero to 60, four and a half seconds. Yes, four and a half seconds for a vehicle this size. You gotta remember, this thing is over 6,000 pounds and you are get, driving these massive 35 inch wheels and you're getting up to 60 pretty quick. Of course, once up to speed, you need to slow this beast down and you have a massive 15 inch rotors uh, on this vehicle. However, I do find when you really need to brake, you actually have to step on it pretty hard. Uh, I wouldn't mind a little bit more uh, boost, but that's just me. The TRX is basically a Hellcat in a pickup truck form. Uh, however, I think this is the more practical Hellcat. Why? Because, you know, if you get the Charger or the Challenger or the Demon, for instance, yeah, those things are great. Uh, blinding acceleration, massive horsepower. Um, but yeah, you're pretty well limited just to drive those on pavement. Uh, so mainly on the street or if you have a racetrack close by. But if you don't, yeah, it's mainly on the street. And there's not a lot of place where you can uh, let seven, eight hundred horsepower uh, vehicles stretch their legs. Uh, meanwhile, with this TRX, hey, you can drive this on the street as a regular everyday driver with 702 horsepower, but you can take it off road. And that doesn't mean just going and, you know, going and doing some extreme off roading, but maybe a lot of logging roads. Maybe you might be going to the cabin or the cottage where you might have extended uh, lengths of of gravel roads and washboard roads and and you know stuff that you're going at a higher speed this is where uh, it'll excel and you can use a lot more of that power uh, on the dirt so yeah this is kind of like two in one so I have not had uh, a lot of opportunity to take this off the pavement this week uh, two reasons I'm moving this week I've been in the same house for almost 25 years and this is a big move so it's taken up all of my time and in order to get off road uh, out of the city it's it's pretty far you know so I just haven't had the chance however I did go into a little industrial area um, and it just doesn't do it justice you know there's some a little a few whoops there and I can tell how capable this thing is so where the TRX shines is obviously not just on the street it's really it is an off-road performance it's a machine. It's a purpose-built, uh, it's basically a street legal trophy Baja truck. So you, it's made, it's actually made to go over like uh, big whoops and real uh, crazy, crazy stuff at high speeds, like over 100 miles an hour. On all four corners you have uh, Bilstein or Bilstein adaptive uh, shocks. You have remote reservoirs for those. And um, this even has a, a jump detection. So what does that mean? Well, hey, if you actually happen to go get airborne, which there are a lot of videos out there uh, out there on YouTube that people have launched this vehicle. I, I'm very, very envious that uh, anyone that's had a chance to actually jump this truck, uh, there's nowhere I can do that legally around here. I really wish I could. Uh, but uh, so when this thing uses the accelerometers, it uses the wheel speed sensors, when it senses that you are airborne, it the computer goes and it will it'll lock the transmission so it's not going to gear down. It actually controls the drive line, the transfer case, everything so you're not going to over rev the engine and it actually uh, adjusts the, the suspension. So when you land, you are going to have uh, a better experience when you land. So yeah, this thing is uh, like, what other truck, what other vehicle do you buy to actually jump? And the nice thing is, if you were to actually take a regular Ram 1500 and do all the adjustments uh, that this TRX has, it would still never be the same as this TRX because this is built on a, a you know on a, on a strengthened chassis, and there's just a lot of differences to it. But if you were to do that, you wouldn't have a warranty. This one, you have a full warranty. 
So you have a 702 horsepower vehicle. Uh, you can take it off road. If you happen to jump it, hey, that's good. If something goes wrong, you can take it back and get it repaired. That's pretty cool and that's cool on all of the Hellcat products as well. Like I said, this vehicle just doesn't really make sense. But you know what? It's kind of like a guilty pleasure. It's like having that triple cheeseburger once a year. Hey, why not? If it's there, why not have it? Or if, if they build it, why not buy it uh, if you can afford it? Uh, for me, it would be the fuel economy that would actually turn me off. I wouldn't be able to afford it mainly just for that. However, you have to remember, you are driving the you know, the king of the jungle, the, the great white shark of the ocean. You're, you're at the top of the food chain. This is as big and as bad as it gets for a street legal production pickup truck, hands down. However, uh, Ford and their Raptor, guess what? They just introduced their new one. And yes, it only has the six cylinder, but they did introduce the Raptor R coming out next year. And you know that Ford is not just gonna lay down uh, after seeing this TRX. As I mentioned, this vehicle doesn't make a lot of sense uh, when everyone's trying to save fuel. Um, this is just burning it up as fast as you possibly can. It, you kind of feel like you are driving a vehicle in Mad Max and the Road Warrior. I don't know if you've watched those movies with Mel Gibson, but uh, yeah, you're, you've got that big supercharger going and you're just drinking up that fuel as fast as you possibly can and you're just looking for more of it. That's that's what this thing is. Um, but you know what? Not everything makes sense and it's just consider it a guilty pleasure. Uh, there's not a lot of these on the road so that's probably a good thing but hey, you have to remember this is the top of the food chain. This is the king of the jungle, the great white shark of the ocean. This is just playing the biggest, baddest, most extreme street Lego performance pickup truck that you can buy, like I said at the beginning, uh, hands down. Uh, Ford came out with their new Raptor just about a month ago, and a lot of people were disappointed because they stuck with their EcoBoost, their six cylinder, and uh, it's down by a couple hundred horsepower compared to this, so there's there's no comparison. However, they did announce that they are coming out with a Raptor R next year, and you know that they're not gonna lie down uh, just to the, this TRX here. And hey, it's good to see this friendly competition, and guess what? We all benefit from it because we're gonna see some more extreme vehicles coming out from both companies. So to end off this segment, I'm going to leave you with a few more images of this TRX and let's crank up the tunes. Um, I mentioned this before, the 900 watt Harman Kardon 19 speaker system in this, it's about a $2,000 upgrade. You gotta get this system if you buy this truck. It is such an amazing audio system. It's so clean. Uh, I'd like to play something like, uh, especially driving this truck, something like like Motley Crue's Kickstart My Heart. That would be just totally killer for this truck. However, because of copyright, I can't. Uh, so let's just put on some royalty-free music, but let's crank it and show you some more beautiful images. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick look at the Ram TRX. Uh, vehicles like this don't come around very often. I'm very, very gracious and thankful to Ram Trucks Canada for allowing me to have a chance at getting behind the wheel of a vehicle like this. And um, hope to see you on the next review. Take care, thanks.